Now we turn to the algebra aspect of this macroeconomic equilibrium. So we're going to be using that aggregate expenditure function that we've talked about, and then solve for the real GDP that puts this model into equilibrium. As you see up here, I have what aggregate expenditure is, consumption, planned investment, government purchases, and net exports. I also have the consumption function, along with autonomous, planned investment, government purchases, and net exports. Notice here how I just have I instead of planned investment because we know that planned investment and investment are equal when we are in macroeconomic equilibrium. So we can drop a little bit of notation there. There's one more equation. There's a sixth equation that we need, and that's when we are in macroeconomic equilibrium, which hopefully by now you know is when real GDP represented by Y equals aggregate expenditure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to say, okay, well, if Y equals aggregate expenditure, and aggregate expenditure C plus PI plus G plus NX, and I plug all this other stuff in, I can see by taking all of these things together, I'll have Y equals consumption, which is C bar plus MPC, Y minus T bar, plus I bar plus G bar plus NX. And we might think, well, that's where we need to stop. But we actually have to go a few steps further. Because notice that real GDP is on the left-hand side, and it's embedded there in the consumption function on the right-hand side. Meaning that when this Y goes up, this one goes up, and it keeps cycling through. So what we need to do is we need to isolate real GDP and solve for real GDP to figure out the level of real GDP that puts this model into macroeconomic equilibrium. The first step is let's go ahead and distribute this marginal propensity to consume through to both y and t bar. So we'll just say y is actually equal to, so therefore y is equal to c bar plus mpc y minus mpc t bar plus i bar plus g bar plus nx bar. And most students can follow along that far. We then want to isolate the y. So we have a y over here and a y over here. Let's go ahead and subtract mpc times y from both sides. Let's see what we get. On this left hand side I have 1y minus mpc y's. So I have 1 minus mpc times y. These are going to cancel out. And on the right hand side here, I'm going to put all of the autonomous spending together. So let's go C bar plus I bar plus G bar plus NX bar. And then I'm going to put the minus MPC times T bar. So we're just going to use the commutative property here in algebra to say that we can move this stuff back and forth. Now we need to divide both sides by 1 minus MPC in order to get Y by itself. So let's divide both sides by 1 minus MPC. Those are going to cancel out, and so we're going to get Y equals, I'm going to make this a little different. Okay. I'm going to separate this part and then separate this part. Because we have a common denominator, we can split that up. I'm also going to say that instead of dividing by 1 minus MPC, we can multiply by 1 over 1 minus MPC. For example, if I want to divide by 4, like 7 divided by 4 is the same thing as 7 times 1 fourth. So what I'm going to do here is instead of dividing by 1 minus MPC, I'm going to multiply this by 1 over 1 minus MPC. And we're going to get the following. 1 over 1 minus MPC. That's going to be all multiplied by C bar, I bar, G bar, and X bar. We have a minus sign. I'm going to have MPC, which is this part 
divided by 1 minus MPC, which is this part, all of that's going to be multiplied by T bar. This is going to be our equation that tells me what level of real GDP puts this aggregate expenditure model into macroeconomic equilibrium. We're going to explore these different parts and show how this can have very significant impacts to overall macroeconomic policy as we move forward with that throughout this course.